When it comes to managing stress, anxiety, and improving performance, there's various different approaches that we can use. Firstly, there's uh, psychological practices where we use mindset and shifting our focus. And then there are meditative techniques. We'll discuss three of which in this video. And then there is HRV training as well. And for the purposes of this video, I really wanted to test out what meditation techniques work best and how does this relate to our HRV. And what a lot of people find very surprising is that I personally do not meditate. And the reasons why will become apparent when we start testing the various different meditation techniques and may in fact surprise you to see the results. Meditation can roughly be categorized into three different approaches. Firstly, there are mindful-based meditations which involve observing the mind. Uh, secondly, there are breathing exercises that you can use to calm down the nervous system. And thirdly, there are interceptive awareness where you are simply feeling the body and the emotions and the sensations. And most meditations actually combine uh, a number of these practices in the one meditation practice. So it's often hard to delineate which one uh, someone is using precisely. To test out these meditation techniques, we first need a tool to provide specific measurable and tangible results. And uh, these tools actually fall into two categories. The first is mindware devices, which measure surface brain activity and um, their devices such as the Muse or the emotive devices that uh, measure EEG or electroencephalography. And then there are wearable devices which measure your heart rate variability. And these are in your Fitbit devices, in Apple Watches, and what I've got here is an Aura Ring which does the same thing. I picked the Aura Ring specifically because I wanted a wearable device that recorded my biometric data comparable to what you get in a clinical grade ECG device or electrocardiogram. And the Aura Ring itself has three sensors in it. The first sensor measures arterial blood flow, which gives an indication of your heart rate and respiration. The second sensor is a 3D accelerometer and that basically measures uh, your movement and daily activity. And lastly, it has a temperature sensor as well. Measuring arterial blood flow correlates well with uh, what you get from a clinical grade ECG. However, it has one critical drawback in that it is very susceptible to movement. So if you are doing any form of fitness or any daily activity, you wouldn't be able to measure your resting heart rate or heart rate variability during this. So in order to get the most accurate re readings out of your heart rate, you have to sit down and be still for the recording to take place. And so that is one of the major drawbacks of using the Aura Ring. The second reason that I picked the Aura Ring is because aesthetics matter. And with the Aura Ring, it passes off as an inconspicuous jewelry and it's also highly durable and uh, comfortable. So I can wear it while I'm training, I can wear it while uh, I'm in a boardroom or in the sun or in the ocean. And lastly, the Aura Ring is non-invasive and unlike other smart devices like smart watches, it doesn't provide you with any notifications, it doesn't have any blinking lights or haptic feedback, there are no buttons on this ring. So that reason alone means that uh, it is not interfering with my day-to-day -day life. So these are some of the things that you can consider when you're selecting your wearable device to measure your biometric data. So now let's have a look at why HRV or heart rate variability is important to your meditation. This simply comes down to the fact that while the brain can rest, uh, while you sleep or when you meditate, the heart itself does not have that option. The heart cannot pause. So the way the heart finds rest is by slowing down and we call this the parasympathetic state. Compared to the sympathetic state where the heart rate is accelerated and uh, we call that the fight or flight response. For me, a true measure of how well 
your body is rested is what your resting heart rate looks like and how much time do you actually spend in the parasympathetic state. High heart rate variability is actually indicative of good mental health and physical performance. And the reason being is that you're able to seamlessly switch between resting state and activity. And this can be apparent in social scenarios. For example, when you are calm and relaxed, it also means that you're more approachable. And when people do approach you, you can take that conversation to a level of excitement or bring it down if you really need someone to pay attention. So this allows you the flexibility to be adaptive. And the adaptivity of the nervous system is measured by how high your heart rate variability is. For this experiment, I chose to increase my heart rate by using ring push-ups. And push-ups will increase your heart rate, but I wanted to add an extra layer of instability, and this would increase my level of stress while doing push-ups. And then I followed this up by immediately going onto the Aura app and seeing how quickly my heart rate decelerates back to baseline. For the first trial, I wanted to see what my natural heart rate recovery is. And so I did the 10 push-ups and then simply sat down and reflected upon my life. And over the course of 10 minutes, it took uh, around three and a half minutes for my heart rate to drop from 75 beats per minute to 59 beats per minute, which was my lowest heart rate during the recording. And then my heart rate gradually leveled off at around 67 beats per minute. So this was without any meditation practice, simply sitting down with my eyes open and seeing what happens. For the second trial, I used the meditation which is inbuilt into the Aura app. And uh, this is the mindfulness-based meditation which lasts for 10 minutes. And I did the 10 push-ups and then went immediately into the 10-minute mindfulness-based meditation. And for this trial, it took about four minutes for my heart rate to drop to around 69 beats per minute, which was the lowest in uh, this trial. And then it gradually rose back up to around 73 beats per minute. For the third trial, I used the inbuilt breathing exercises, which are in the Aura app and this is called the 21 breath meditation and after doing 10 push-ups my uh, heart rate started at 80 beats per minute and over three and a half minutes it dropped down to 69 beats per minute and then uh, gradually leveled off to around 72 beats per minute so this is not uh, unsimilar to what the mindfulness based uh, practice uh, provided for the final trial, I actually used the vagal breathing exercises, which is part of my Train Your Nervous System online course. And this meditation lasts for 15 minutes. And when I did the 10 push-ups, my heart rate rose to around 83 beats per minute. And then within two minutes, it fell down to 63 beats per minute and then it gradually leveled off to 68 beats per minute throughout the duration of the meditation. And what is most profound about these three techniques is when you look at the heart rate variability for the mindfulness-based practice and the 21 breath meditation, the heart rate variability gradually decayed throughout the entire duration of the meditation. And this is not uh, too different to what happened quite naturally without any meditation as well. But what is surprising is that in the vagal breathing meditation, there was a very sudden decline in both the resting heart rate as well as the heart rate variability. And once the heart rate variability came down, it was able to remain low throughout the duration of the meditation. So this is perhaps the most interesting finding in this experiment. When I first formulated the vagal breathing techniques, I was very surprised at how effective it was at reducing the heart rate. 
but it exceeded my own expectations when I found that when I was teaching this to people, especially elite athletes and CEOs from Fortune 500 companies, that their nervous system was able to anticipate stress and self-regulate in real time. So this was something that I did not expect, but it allowed people to stay in a meditative state without actually meditating. So make no mistake, meditation practices actually work well when you're in a group setting in the candlelit room and the perfect music. But sooner or later, reality does come crashing in. And when you're by yourself, um, freaking out, can't switch off, or simply waking up at the middle of the night with a panic attack, you want something that is simple, quick and effective and very utilitarian to be able to calm down yourself in that moment. And the vagal breathing practice actually ticks all of those boxes. Let me know in the comments below what your wearable device of choice is and what your experience is with the different uh, approaches to meditation. And if you can share me with me your results as well. Thank you for watching.